So in this video, we're going to continue working on some elements that are part of the base of the watch, such as the flame logo and also a little graphic you see at the upper area. This is also going to be discussed, how these objects were created inside a flame. So let's go back to our batch setup. In here, you're going to see a couple still images. One is of the flame logo that we're going to use as a reference while creating the different geometry the different masks, and also a graphic element. As I said, we're going to create this inside of Flame. So let's go to the Effects nodes, and let's drag an action tool into our schematic. Hold the Shift key and kiss the Flame logo to put it in our, our background. We'll hit F4 for our end result, and let's go to our node bin. Let's drag a 3D shape into the action schematic and return back to our end result. And then I'm going to start just drawing the shape just like we did before. Click once to create a corner point, and click and drag to create a curved bezier point. I just want to remind you once again, if we go to our object and our vertices settings for the G-Mask we're creating, we have Auto Tangent disabled, but I'll just continue drawing along following the shape of our Flame logo. I'm sure you know this, but you hit the space bar to access the pan tool, but I'll just mention it since I'm using it a lot as we move along our mask here. And then we close our shape. And just like we did before, we want to adjust our transparency of this mask so we can see through it. And then going to the very first control point I created, I want to break this. So I hit the B key to get our break tool and I click on it to create the tangent handles. And with the break tangent tool still active, I now can take these tangent handles and independently adjust them. Hit the M key to go back to our select tool. And now I'm just going to take some time to fine tune the shape, either with the tangent handles or the control points. And once you're satisfied with your shape, we now want to create another mask that's going to punch the hole through this mask. So let's go back to our schematic view and let's select our 3D shape once again. Go back to the node bin and then click and drag an additional GMAX into the schematic, which will connect to our 3D shape. Go back to the end result, and let's click and create the shape. Once again, we're gonna adjust the control points and the tangent handles to match the background. Go to the object parameters. Make sure you're at the spline parameters. Enable the whole option. Go back to the schematic, select the 3D shape once again. Drag another GMAX into the schematic. Return to the result view and start clicking and drawing our mask for the inner part of the logo. Once you've finished drawing this front object, down on the object parameters, and then from the basic tab, under spline combinations, switch it from intersection, switch it to priority. Go back to the schematic once again, make sure you have your 3D shape selected, and then go back to our tools and let's bring another G mask into the scene. Go back to the result and then finish drawing the shape for this last part of our logo. Just as before, zoom in, adjust, make it as perfect as possible. Once you're happy with the shape, we want to extrude it. So go to the object tab once again. But before we do the extrusion, let's actually go to our geometry tab and let's set our transparency to zero. So the masks have no transparency. Now, if we quickly go back to our schematic, select our main axis, we can rotate this in the view to see our geometry. Let's also disable our background. We don't need to see that anymore. Select the 3D geometry once again, go back to our object tab and the basic controls. Let's set the depth for the extrusion to be 50 or maybe 40. Now let's go to our node preferences and enable shading. In the schematic view, hold the Alt key or the Option key and select our top axis to select all the nodes. Then hit Control C to copy this. So now we've copied our flame logo. Then hit the Escape key. Select our original action with our base already modeled. And then in the schematic for this action, just as we did before, hit Control V to paste our flame logo into this action. Looking at the end result, you can see the geometry has come in, but there's some issues we need to address. I'll go back to the schematic view. 
We want to access our priority editor. We can do that by simply tapping or swiping to the bottom of the UI. By selecting the first G mask on the left, you can see that that is at the top. So let's select the next G mask right to the right of that. And then down in the priority editor, click the bring to front button. Select the next one, the third one from the left. And to see what's actually happening, hit the F4 key. Hit the bring the front button twice for this one. And then select the last mask and click the bring the front button three times for this one. So now we've reorganized our priority for our masks and our logo is looking like we want it, but it's not in the right position yet. So let's go back to our schematic and select the axis for the entire logo. Make sure you only have this axis selected. Then click the reset button to reset all of its parameters and then connect it to the main control axis for the entire scene. Hit F4 once again. Now let's add a material to our logo. So to do that, let's go back to the schematic, then select our 3D shape, go to the node bin, hit the S key and drag a substance PBR into the scene. I'll enable the proxies and then I'll select the metal aluminum substance PBR. Let's go back to our end result. Now I want to change the normals on the substance PBR. Select the normals texture right over here. Let's hit F4 to look at our result again and I'll adjust the Y value under the normal controls. I'll set it to eight and then select the axis for the entire logo. I'll use the scale parameters to scale it down. I'll start to adjust the Y position to bring it down. Also start making adjustments for the Z position and just make the adjustments needed with the Y, the Z and the scale parameter to bring it down to the size and the location that we want it. Maybe adjust the X parameter also for the position. It doesn't have to be exact, but just for reference, I have the X position at minus 10. The Y position is at negative 333. The Z position is 36 and the scale is at 18. Now that I see it in position, I want to adjust my normals a little more. So go back to the schematic, select the normal texture. I'll change the Y value once again. Bring it to about 20. The next thing we want to create is the graphic shape. If we go back and look at the end result, this little graphic right up here. Once again, I'll hit escape to go back to our batch schematic. And here's our little image that we're going to use as our reference. I'll add another action node and feed it in as the background. So I'm going to go through the same procedure of adding G mask to the 3D shape and draw the different parts of this logo. We'll fast forward through this since this is very repetitive to what we've already done. So here we now at the end result, my masks have now created all the shapes that I needed. We've turned off the background and we've set our transparency to zero for our G masks. Now, because this action setup is using the background as its size, as the end result, if we go to the node preferences, you can see it's set as same as background. And if I switch it to user defined, you can see that the size is 800 by 800. We're going to use this as an image, not as a 3D geometry. And since we're using it as an image, not a geometry, we can add some softness to the actual edge of this. So I'll hit the A key to go to our add points tool and then hold the shift key and click at the very edge of our G mask, the first one we created and drag out. And then I'll go back to the schematic. I'll select the 3D shape node, go to the object basic parameters, and then under G mask transparency, where it reads, do not render, switch that to four 3D shape only. Now we'll go through and select each one of the G masks with the A key active for our add points and hold shift and click and add softness to each one of the G masks. And now this is the end result for our graphic shape that we're going to incorporate into our other action setup. So let's go out to the batch schematic, hit the escape key, select our main action node, the one with our base and all the graphics we've already created, hit control N to add an input. And then we're going to connect the main output, the result from our action node with this graphic to the mat input we just created. Now select our main action and let's go into its schematic view. 
and there you see the new nodes for our input. Let's connect the main action as the parent to our new image. Let's go back to the end result and start to adjust the axis and the Z parameter. And then we can use the scale parameters, the rotation parameters, and our position parameters to put it exactly where we want it on the base of the watch. You can also hit I to access your icons and then manually position it directly inside the viewport if needed. And then hide the icons again to see the end result once you think you're happy with its position, its scale, and its rotation. And again, we can just fine tune this a little more, such as adjusting our Z position. So that's looking pretty good now. Now you don't need to have it exactly the same as what you see here, but just for reference, the X position is at negative 180. The Y position is 26.50. The Z position is 22.57. We've rotated on the Z parameter to 92, and the scale parameter is set at 37. If we go back and select our main axis for the entire base, and we start to adjust our rotation, you can see how that graphic is now locked to our base. And that is going to be it for this video.